It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Scott Adams and Robert D'Angelo have more commonalities than they actually realize. And to illustrate my point, let's watch the clip directly from Scott Adams when it comes down to the issue of race. You know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll. Not according to me. According to this poll. Uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. As you guys can see in the video, Scott Adams said that his justification from leaving from black people was because of the poll data, and because of the poll data, view white people in a negative light, that's the main motivation on why he wants to leave. So what exactly does Robert D'Angelo have to say about that particular issue? And then I'm a big believer in affinity space, in affinity work. And I think people of color need to get away from white people <laughs> and, and have some community um, with each other. And I'll, I'll let that go and maybe see if anyone else wants to pick it up. The amount of hypocrisy between the two reactions is just absolutely stunning. As soon as the video that Scott Adams have done about black people went viral, he lost everything. He cannot find any type of job as a direct result of his comments. Meanwhile, it seems as though that people like Robert D'Angelo actually agrees with the comments about segregating black people from white people, yet at the same time, she is not necessarily canceled thanks to her comment because she's considered to be an anti-racist activist. In the book White Fragility, she makes the exact argumentation that black people cannot be racist against white people. People of color may also hold prejudices and discriminate against white people, but they lack the social and institutional power that transform their prejudices and discrimination into racism. The impact of their prejudices on whites is temporarily and contextual. Whites hold a social institutional position in society to infuse their racial prejudices into the laws, policy, practices, and norms of society in a way that people of color do not. A person of color may refuse to wait on me if I enter a shop, but a person of color cannot pass legislation that prohibits me and everyone like me from buying a home in a certain neighborhood. If you guys thought that quotation was bad, wait until you guys see this particular clip right here. The question is, um, do you find that in some progressive institutions, Politically conservative people of color are sought out by white progressives, resembling historically the way many black overseers on plantations were rewarded by their slave masters for exacting cruelty on the enslaved. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, I don't think they're the norm. I think they're somewhat the exception, but they absolutely exist. Kirk Thomas, excuse me, I had something in my throat again. Um, <laughs> And white people do do love to elevate their voices. Um, so that's that's why I think affinity work for people of color is really, really critical to see where they are colluding. Um, and, and again, those are incredibly sensitive conversations. I don't think they are my business, but that's one place you can work on the ways that that we all uphold these systems. As I speak right now, Robert D'Angelo charges up to 14000 per speech and makes over 728000 a year. To all the progressives in the room, I want to repeat the question again. What is the difference between Scott Adams and Robert D'Angelo? If you guys claim that Scott Adams is actually racist but not Robert D'Angelo, you're actually stuck in a columndrum because if one thing is wrong and someone got his job canceled because of that wrong thing, then that other person should not have a job too by that very logic. What do you guys think? 
tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler